What is up everybody? Today I'm going to be taking a look at this monitor right here behind me. It's the ViewSonic VX2458-MHD. Had to write that down. This one's coming in at under $200 and it's a 144Hz panel. So this should be interesting. Let's see if it's worth it. This monitor is rocking a 24-inch 1080p TN panel with 5 milliseconds graded gray response time and FreeSync support. To set it up, the stand pops in like so and screws into place with this one screw located underneath it. You can tilt the display upwards or downwards to adjust the viewing angle. It's not the sturdiest of stands, but it does the job. There are four mounting points on the back, which are 100 by 100 millimeter VESA compatible. On the top, you can see through this grill two internal 2 watt stereo speakers. Please do yourself a favor and do not use these. They sound terrible, but are there for a worst case scenario. There are six buttons located on the back of the monitor, five to navigate the on-screen display and one for power. The ports are located on the bottom and consist of two HDMI 1.4s, one DisplayPort 1.2, and one audio out port as well as the power port. ViewSonic has decided to add these red accents, I guess to emphasize that it's a gaming monitor. Not a huge fan of the aesthetics, but that is subjective though. And when sitting on its own, it doesn't look too bad. They do have the ViewSonic logo on the top left, which I always kind of like. Again, very subjective. In the box, you also get the power cable and an HDMI cable. Something quick I wanted to point out is uh, even though they give you this HDMI cable, I don't recommend using it because you can't actually get free sync with HDMI. So it's interesting that they include that, I guess maybe because it's more universally used or maybe because it's just cheaper. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and put this aside for something else and I'd recommend grabbing one of these. Uh, just a regular display port cable. I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I personally use. Just something to keep in mind. So this is the computer I'm going to be using. It's my personal rig. Uh, it's going to be volunteering to run some games. Shouldn't have any issues running it at 144Hz. Um, it's running an RTX 2080 Ti, i9-9900K, and um, it even has a handle. For those of you who don't know, you can now enable G-Sync on FreeSync displays with newer NVIDIA cards. To do so, first enable FreeSync on the monitor by going to Setup menu, AMD FreeSync, then On. After that, go to the NVIDIA control panel, set up G-Sync, then click on enable G-Sync. Enable for windowed and full screen mode is what I selected. Then here on three, make sure to click enable settings for the selected display model. Hit apply and you're all set. These are the on-screen display settings. You can select your input, adjust volume for the speakers, and there are some different viewing modes, but from what I tested, they only make things look worse. Color adjustment settings. Here you can mess with your contrast, brightness, and so on. Manual image adjust, you get your sharpness, blue light filter, black stabilization, dynamic contrast ratio, and response time settings, which I will get into later. The colors do shift when viewing it from wide angles, which is expected for TN panels. It's not the worst of its kind though. There is a little backlight bleed, but nothing too noticeable in person. Using this monitor, even for basic day-to-day -day stuff, is unreal. Everything is so smooth compared to 60 Hertz. It does make everything more enjoyable. Browsing the web, scrolling on Spotify, everything just feels responsive. I left the response time on advanced as a good middle ground between responsiveness and ghosting. I tried the super fast one millisecond setting, but something felt off to me, especially in games. I took these pictures, take them with a grain of salt. This is standard, advanced, and super fast. Now for the fun part, gaming. This is definitely where the monitor shines. Games look great and more importantly feel incredibly smooth. After using it for a week, I can confidently say that it does improve your playing. Most people will look at a display like this for competitive gaming, rightfully so, that's where the biggest advantage will be seen since it requires you to be so precise with your movements. Not saying casual gaming won't see any improvements either, just messing around with a couple games everything became much more enjoyable, even racing games felt much more realistic. Unfortunately not all games can run at this frame rate, some are locked to 60fps. Fighting games in particular I wanted to try at 144Hz but couldn't find any. I wanted to compare this display quickly to another one I have, which is almost identically priced. This is a Dell SE2717H, 27-inch 1080p IPS display. Putting them side by side, the ViewSonic appears very washed out in comparison, and the viewing angles are obviously drastically improved on the Dell. The colors appear to be more natural on the Dell as well. I look forward to the day we have 8K, 300Hz OLED displays with nanosecond response times. Until then, there is a decision to be made, especially at this price range. I'd recommend the Dell for web browsing and multimedia. For the ViewSonic, I would recommend it for gaming and gaming. It does that and it does it well. 
If it was my only display, I would be happy with it, but personally I do prefer a higher resolution and something a little more color accurate. Thanks for checking out this review guys, I hope you liked it. If you want, leave a like or comment or subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.